Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. If you got the joy of the Lord in your heart this morning, come on, no matter what you're feeling like, it's a, it's a, it's a decision to choose joy in spite of your circumstance. This is a brand new day with fresh mercy, with fresh grace. Come on, today is the day that you have made, Lord. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, lift up your voice today. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. We're not where we used to be. Oh, we choose joy. We choose strength, God. We choose joy. Day is a day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Say, this is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. This is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, say, this is the day, the day you have made. I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, the day you have made. To be glad in this, so this is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in this. This is, this is the day, the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day.
rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. This is the day, day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
form of worship this morning. If I can have the ushers come forward. Yes, can we give the Lord, church, can we give the Lord praise as the ushers come forward? We're going to praise him in our finances. Why? Because he deserves it. He deserves our praise. He deserves our finances. Every part of us, he deserves it all. 
I do have a few announcements this morning. Just a quick reminder, we do have service this Wednesday, so make sure you guys come on out to our Bible study service. Bring, make sure you bring your paper, pen, your binders, uh, whatever you need to get a hold of God. We're going to search the scriptures. It's been good. I can't wait for the next one. Um, but yes, make sure you guys come on out. And then also, just a quick reminder, we do not have service this Friday. I know, guys. We are going camping, though. The guys are going camping. The men will be heading out on Thursday. So we are going to have a quick meeting in the back after service regarding that. But it's not too late. If you decide you want to go for maybe one or two days, come to the meeting. Even if you're coming for one or two days, uh, please meet us back there. Um, ladies, push your men to go out. Push them. Push them out the door. Let them get a hold of God out there. And also be uh, in fellowship with brothers, and right? Because the world's going to want to befriend us, and they're going to want to befriend you right away. But there's, there's places here for the, us, us as men and as God, that God has placed in our lives to become brothers. We are brothers. So let, let them go out and receive. All righty. I just want to encourage you guys this morning in our giving. Paul addresses the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 4. It says, and you, Philippians, yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving. There's a, there's a, a process. There, there was a revival that was taking place, right? The book of, in the beginning of the gospel, where things were getting spread out. We're here only because the gospel was spread. And there was individuals. He said that there was only, only them, only these people who were willing to supply to give finances, to, to further the kingdom. But it also wasn't just giving, he said, it was receiving. There was a lot of people that didn't receive what God had for them because they chose not to give. And the Bible says, go, if you read that chapter, it goes on to say that they gave and supplied the needs of the church and God supplied the needs of the people. And that's what takes place. When we supply the needs of the church, when we further God's, God's kingdom, when we give to the gospel, so that we can further the kingdom here in Modesto. God's going to supply your needs. And we have to trust that. So as we give, we're going to pray and just ask God to, to bless, bless this offering. Bless it. Multiply it. God's still the God of multiplication. He still multiplies things. And he can do that for you as well. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come before you, Lord God, just thanking you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be here in your house, Lord God. We ask, Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you would just continue, Lord God, to reign upon us, Lord God. We ask right now, we cry out, Lord God, for revival, Lord God, for souls, Lord God, for breakthroughs, Lord God, for deliverances, Lord God, here in your house, Lord God. We, Lord God, give you full control and full range, Lord God, of everything that we do, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, for a special anointing on our pastor, Lord God, this morning, Lord God. Give us a word, Lord God. Cleanse our hearts, Lord God. Let us receive everything that you have for us, Lord God, this morning. In Jesus' name. Before we go into worship, I just want to encourage you guys. These altars are still open. I see these kids coming up here and, and just going to battle. Sometimes revival is here. Like she was saying, revival is here and it's happening, but it's up to you if you want it. This isn't a restaurant where they come and serve you. We came here for Jesus, and we came here to give him praise and glory. So if that's you, these altars are open. Come and give him praise. He's not going to, this isn't a restaurant, you guys.
everything you are, everything you've done this far. We didn't get here by ourselves, Lord. Focus your attention on him this morning. Stay a little bit longer. Gaze a little bit harder.
presence of the Lord. Come on, God wants to do something this morning. Many things were not done because of unbelief, but he said, if you would just believe, if you would just believe, come on, do I got a people in the house of the Lord that will believe this morning? Come on, I need your help this morning, church. Oh, come on, I believe God wants to bring things back to life. He wants to set you on fire. He does, but do you believe he has greater things, greater things to come? Do you believe? Because if you believe, he told Ezekiel, prophesy to this dry area. But he says, Ezekiel, tell it, hear the word of the Lord. And we know in Genesis, when the Father spoke into existence, it was the Holy Spirit that went to work. Why? Because prophesy the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit goes to work. So this, this morning, I want you to begin to declare victory, healing. Come on, mindset's broken. But it's not your word. Sickness, ah, hear the word of the Lord. Now the Holy Spirit goes to work. My unsaved loved one, hear the word of the Lord. Come on, church. It's not by mind, not by power. It's not by the might of many or the power of one, but it's by the Holy Spirit, says the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, every hand lifted, every hand lifted. We're about to go to war. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shatara Baba Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. I know you want to move. I know, I know. Just stay in the moment. God's doing something, Malachi. God's doing something. God's doing something. Josh, God's doing something. God's doing something. Just stay right there. Let it, let, let it happen. Let, let him do it. This morning, as I was praying, seeking the Lord for a word for his people, he brought me back to remembrance when I, as a young boy, and even through the ages of growing up in church, how defensive I became because of the hurt that I experienced. Ah. God is saying to you and I, you and I are not called to be on the defensive. We are called to be on the offensive. Listen, Michael Jordan says this. I know it's not spiritual, but just listen. His life spoke volumes in basketball. Defense wins games, but offense wins championships. And you are called to live a victorious championship life. But what happens is because we've been hurt by people in our church from one another, because we do hurt each other, we come in here with a wall of defense already. And God is saying, my sons and daughters need to hear me now more clearly than ever, son. So this morning, we have to come against every wall of defense. Why is that? Because he is your defender. He is your protector. He is your refuge. He is your strong tower. He is the one that you run to in need. He is the Lion of Judah. When the enemy comes in, what? He raises the standard. Not you. He does. And the standard is the word of truth. But he also says the kingdom of God is suffering violence. But the violent take it by force. And today we're taking ground. Today we're taking territory. But what I believe is the word of the Lord needs to come forth this morning. But the walls have to come down. If you know there's a wall in your life because I offended you, your neighbor offended you, your mom and dad offended you, the world offended you. You need to ask God, Lord, I can't hear you no more. And this morning, some of us, let me just go here and go. Let me just say that some of us, this might be your last opportunity to hear the word of the Lord. But I believe with all my heart, God is saying, now is the time, son. Now is the time, daughter. If you would just say, Lord, I don't believe anymore. My faith is not there anymore. I'm not lined up anymore. But I want to know. Today, that wall's coming down so you can hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. 
Come on, church, it's time to go to war. Come on. The violent taken by force. You are an army of the Lord. Come on and sell the alarm. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, here we go. It's going. It's going. I can feel it stirring. My gosh. Lead us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Oh, there it is. Holy Spirit. There it is. Holy Spirit. There it is. Paul's all over you, Paul. That's it right there. My God. He called over. But I tell him, oh, shit, shit. Oh, it's time to take it back. The kingdom's up is violent. And the body taking my force. The kingdom's up is violent. And the body taking my force. Every wall's coming down. And the body taking my force. We believe. And the body taking my force. The kingdom's up is violent. That's this, Cynthia. Come on, sing it. Sing it. The kingdom's up is violent. And the body taking my force. The kingdom's up is violent. And the body taking my force. Oh, you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer in Jesus. Oh, but we have to be in the war. We got to be in the battle. Oh, but you're on the winning side. We ain't waiting. We ain't waiting. We got the word of the Lord upon this church. We got the worshipers. Oh, you ain't hearing me. We got the worshipers that God has called to go before the battle. He can. Prophesy. We declare. We declare. Heaven on earth. As it is in heaven, so let it be here. As it is in heaven, so let it be here. You've given us keys of the kingdom. You've given us keys of the kingdom. Come on, church. Don't let a lie. Don't let an offense take you out of the army of God. Don't let it take you out. It's time to man up. Put your armor on. We're going to war. We're going to war. Come on. Your brother and sister next to you. That ain't the enemy. That ain't the enemy. That is part of the army of God. Lord, forgive us, Lord. I come against bitterness. I come against jealousy. I come against envy. I come against lawlessness. I come against every foul spirit that wants to try to hinder the army of the Lord. You called us. You called us for this moment. You called us for this moment to be separated unto you, God. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, he's doing it. He's doing it. Can you hear the sound? Can you hear the sound? Whoa. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own worries. You are in the presence of the Lord. Huh. Some of you have things weighing on your mind because you don't know what to expect on a certain circumstance or a certain issue. Well, let me just give you the word of the Lord. He's gone before you. He's gone before you. It's not based on what you did before and how you messed it up. No, why? Because he turns everything around for your good. He's working on our behalf. If God be with you, who can be before you? Shatele. Come on, sing that one more time and we'll give him praise. We'll get into the word of the Lord. We take it by force. We take it by force. We take it by force. 
Take our seats, take our seats. How many are blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Go ahead, if you got your, your Bibles, we're going to get the, go ahead, we can get the lights, Dad, go ahead, that's fine. I'm sorry, that's Tony, but I call him Dad, he's my dad, so you hear me say Dad. Thank you, guys. Who's ready for the word of the Lord? I'm ready to give us the word of the Lord. and God's been speaking to me in my own life and, and, and things that we are involved in as a church, as sons and daughters, fathers, mothers, children, that there needs to be balance in our life. <clears throat> you with me on that? Do you believe there needs to be balance? Well, the word of God says that, right? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is His delight. And so I believe God wants to bring a balance to us because so, sometimes we can get so far on one side. You know, as a boxer or a fighter, those that even in sports, when you're playing basketball or whatever, they always teach you your foundation of where your feet are placed and how your foundation must be because you're, if it's not firm, you're easy to get pushed off balance. One side or the other. But never in the place to counterattack or lead. In boxing, there has to be a foundation. And the foundation is when you're, when, you, when, you're, when you're fighting that your foot, your knee cannot pass your elbow. Or your elbow can't pass your knee. That's the foundation. There's a certain way, whether you're orthodox or, 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 or um, southpaw, whatever that is. There's a foundation. I'm trying to take you somewhere because our foundation is Jesus Christ. Our foundation. How many preach, y'all? I'm, I'm not saying the foundation is remnant church. I'm not saying the foundation is Pastor Rob or Pastor Levi. The foundation is not your husband or your spouse or your wife. The foundation is not the one that we look to to often get a word from. And this is why we're off balance because the foundation is his word. And this is why we're even having these Bible study classes because it's getting us into the word. Right? It's, and there's so much that's even coming to my life. And we know some of these basic things. Oh, we know. But one thing that people do, whether you're in any kind of sport... You're always taught when you're losing something to go back to the basics. Because that's what's got you to where you need to be as far as whatever position you're in. <clears throat> so what I believe this morning is that God wants to give us a balance. Someone say balance. Someone say I need balance. I need balance as a father, as a husband, as a brother, as a pastor, as an assistant pastor under Pastor Robert. And so God wants to do that. But go to John chapter 15. And there, there's a word that's out there that we can be, maybe not have a full understanding. Or maybe at one time we did, but we stepped away from a foundation, right? And the word is love. Someone say love. Love, the love of Christ has a foundation. And if it's not on that foundation, then it's not the love of Christ. Some of us agree on that. Uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into it in the word of God, but. If, it, if it's not the foundation that Jesus has set and patterned, then it's not the love of Christ. And that's how you know what love you're operating with. Is it the love of the world? Have you and I been deceived? Is there, is there an anti-Christ spirit? Let, let me just say this. I'll get ahead of myself. But we went through some major blows. But the kingdom of God suffers violence. So there's things that are going to come to our lives. Some of, some of you, we agree. 
Seen that hand? But it doesn't mean that we stay put and, we, and we're good and that we're okay. The devil makes his rounds to come right back and try to enter in familiar places or familiar spirits. And if you get off the foundation of Jesus Christ, we will be the ones to allow these spirits to come in, whether it's in our church, in our ministries, in our own homes. Because you're off of the truth. You're off of the foundation. Now I'm going to lay a platform for, for you. This is John chapter 15. And then someone will say, then we'll go. I'm not going to keep you long. I just got a few, few scriptures I want to break down according to what the Lord gave me this, last night and this morning. And it goes like this. Uh, John chapter 15, the word of the Lord. You got it? Ch- chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. So even Jesus, we know he doesn't do his own thing. It's based off of his Father's word. We know that Jesus is the word. This is the word. They're connected, right? We know that. We believe that. So the foundation is what? Is his word. If it says, if you keep my commandments or you keep my word, ye shall abide in love. That's revelation already. If you keep on the foundation, now you can abide in that love that I loved with. Or that I've set before you. Because without that, there is no love. It's deception. And let me just say this. If we're practicing to try to teach and, 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 and love people, but it's not with the truth, you're going to be responsible for what you say and how we say it. And how we give in and how we lay ear and how we... See, you can't save nobody. Let me just make this. You're not the Savior. Jesus is. But what brings them to an altar is standing on Jesus. Is standing on the truth and understanding it's not me, but it's he that is in me. Is greater than he that is in you. Or greater than in the circumstance that you find yourself in. We have power and authority to break chains. We have power and authority to raise, our, to raise the dead, to lay our hands on the sick. We do, but that's in him. We've talked about that's in him. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. So you want to know why we, we're, we're, we're stuck on this roller coaster? Because you're off of the foundation. It doesn't matter what you go through. James says, count it all joy. What in the world? Because he's in the love of Jesus. Not his own love, his own perception, how he was raised and what he thought. And it's my family, so I can, be, I can do this. I, it's off of the love of, it's off of the truth, the love of Jesus, the word of God. Now your joy may be full, no matter what comes your way. No matter what the doctor says about your sickness. No matter what happens. There's no clarity in a lot of different things. It doesn't matter. I still got the joy juice. Why? Because I'm in him. And even when I get offended and people come against me, there's still the love for those people because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But spiritual wickedness in high places. So even when I, if I offend you or you offend me, it's not me. And it's not you. But listen, God is doing, he's always working things out. Sometimes your response is so off, he, he has somebody come to you to get your response right. Because our response is still not according to how Jesus would respond. Right? So he's working on you and he's working on them. That's family. Someone say that's family. We're family. We talked about it, but how do you see one another? Do we see each other? Do you see, how do you see each other? Do you just see each other as family? Because that's, that's great. We're, we're, that's, 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 that's what Jesus wants. But we need to start seeing each other as spiritual sons and daughters of God. Paul's told Timothy, there has to be, it has to be a certain kind, Timothy. He tells Titus that they're of a certain kind, a certain spirit. Right? So we have to start seeing each other and honoring each other as a son of God, as a daughter of God. And if we do that, we won't cross boundaries. Oh, you ain't hearing me. It will keep you at a safe place on the foundation of Jesus. But we often look at each other and we can, I can manipulate, I'm a leader, I can talk, we're family, da 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 And, you, and you, we put ourselves in these positions to be exposed or to be lied to. Because we're not on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Are you with me this morning? Verse 12, right? I'm on verse 12, yes. This is my commandment, or this is my word, that ye love one another. Someone say love one another. How many know we're missing that? I know we can get louder than that on that one. I've seen a couple of hands. Couple of hands. We're missing the love for one another. But why? 
Because the love of the world is lies. Deception, manipulation, the, the, the love of the world will, will try to give you this and that so they can get what they need. So that's why we're missing it. Because we're leading with the wrong love. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Because if you were in Jesus, this would come from us. The true love of the Lord. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. That ye love one another as I have loved you. So he doesn't say do something that he hasn't done. And we know his love was sacrificial. Right? Pastor Robert and Pastor Levi, I will never ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. But this is Jesus speaking. He's telling us, as I have loved you. Verse 13, this is where I got the scripture. God, again, I, this, is, this is amazing. Let me give this, let me give you a nugget here. When you go to sleep, put the word of God on. Because your spirit man doesn't sleep. He's awake. Ah. So when you get up, you're on this new high because your spirit man's being fed the word of God the whole time you sleep. And this has been happening to me every morning. Every, I get up and there's a scripture. There's something that's going on. I mean, I have the Bible just playing. And whatever the Spirit's doing, he's doing. But I go to sleep and I rest in Jesus. See, there's a difference between being lazy and asleep because you're lost in the world and you're just dead tired or resting in Jesus. Right? The ten virgins. Five slept, five rested. What's the difference? When you rest in Jesus, you're prepared. You're still vigilant. You're ready. When you sleep because we're tired and we're lazy and the world has the best of us, we can't even give our family anything, our wives anything, our children, our grandchildren, because we're so beat up. We come into the house and we fall asleep. That's because we're not ready. Right? Five were left and five went. So resting in Jesus is needed. But can I tell you, just renew your spirit as you're sleeping. Let your spirit get filled with the word of God. And you're going to find it being written on the tablet of your heart. I have, I have hid your word within me, Lord, that I may not sin against you. You'll find yourself not walking into temptations. You'll find yourself getting up in the presence of the Lord and quoting scripture. You're like, man, you're not even thinking about anything. You're not looking no more where you used to look. Things change. Number, verse 13, greater love hath no man than this. Then he would lay his life down for a friend. Are we friends? Are you a friend of Jesus? Are you willing to lay your life down for me? And I'm not saying die for me. If that, I, mean, I, I would die for some of you, probably not all of you. I wouldn't ask you to die for me either. But, but I'm, I'm just being real. But I would for some of you. I'm not going to lie. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. Well, it depends on what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. Maybe I would jump in. <laughs> I thought you said you wouldn't die for me. He wouldn't die. Well, the Holy Spirit told me to do it, so I did it. No. No greater love than this, and you would lay your life down for a friend. This is the love of Jesus, church. Now I'm going to preach this. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. You're not my friends because you say you're a friend of Jesus. Oh, we don't like this, right? You're a friend of God if you do, is you, if you obey what he asks you to do. According to what? His word. Easy. This. The word of God. Henceforth I call you not servants. Woo! For the servant knoweth not what the Lord is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. He doesn't hold secrets from you and I. This is powerful. Why? Because it, now it falls back on you. It falls back on me now. Now there's a choice. Because when you get to heaven, I revealed everything. Now, there's, there, there might be a reason why we can't hear because you're, you're uncircumcised in the ears, uncircumcised in the heart, right? But we'll go there in a minute. We'll, we'll try to, we'll see what happens. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Someone say he chose me. But he chose you out of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his, holy, his only begotten son. So loved. Right, even in your insecurities and your mess ups and even how you look. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you guys laugh or wake up a little bit. No. <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. You can stumble and fall. Oh, I'm, I died for him. Right, I, I said this before. I remember my son playing t, t ball when he was a little boy. He was so cute. He's still handsome. He's handsome now, but 
he was cute then. And, and, and I went to a t-ball game, and he hits the ball for the first time. He hits the ball off the little stand, and he's running. He doesn't know when to run. And I'm shouting at the loudest, run! And everybody's looking at me like, dude, you relax. <laughs> and then he runs, and then he, he passes first base, and he keeps going. And the coach says, go back, and I'm going to go back. <laughs> right? My sunflower seeds are small, they're going all over the floor. And I don't even care why, because that's my, I so love him. I don't care how I look. I don't care how, how he looked. For somebody, oh, he's overdoing it. No, I love that kid. I'll die for that kid. Yeah. And that's how Jesus, he's I chose you. Yeah. But he chose you in that love. Yeah. But listen to what he says. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. To what? To remain in that love. I chose you because of love, but I'm asking you to remain in that love. I didn't, I didn't choose you to come out and do what you want. I chose you to come out and remain in the love of Jesus. And ordains you that ye should go bring forth fruit in that love. Not just saying things. There has to be fruit. And can I be honest? Okay, here, the, the fruit that God is looking for is going to be behind closed doors. It's going to be in secret places. It's going to be in birthday parties and hangouts. It's going to be in, in those type of meetings. That's where the fruit needs to be seen. So do not be deceived because God's not mocked. But also as a believer, we don't judge the person, but listen to what they're saying and understand what fruit's there. Because you are just as responsible for giving ear as the one that is speaking into you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that your fruit should remain, that whosoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, I will give it unto you. Do you ever ask, man, well, how come I'm not receiving certain things that I, Lord, what's going on? And there's certain things that we're not going to have a full understanding. It's up to the Lord. But can I be honest with you? There's things that are going on, going on in my life. And God showed me according to the word of God and the Holy Spirit certain things that are taking place. I'm okay with it. You have to be okay with it. God's not going to withhold things from you. But if you're ever asking, why is my marriage still the same way? I'm here. I'm faithful. I'm serving. I'm in leadership. I'm in ministry. I, go, I do whatever the church needs. Because the foundation is love. But love has a foundation. Now, I'm, I'm, he's about to release something upon our church. Because we're going to be forever changed. But God, I, I can feel the Holy Spirit already hitting. It's heavy in here. My God. He's about to un, a, a release something and unlock something for his sons and his daughters. Because he, he released it in my life. These things I command to you that you will love one another. He's commanding us now. If we were of the world, the world would love us as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Now, why is that? If I love. There's a lot. I have love for people. Why does the world hate me? Well, we'll get there. Because, it, because love has a foundation that the world don't stand on. Uh, see, it's the church of God that he built and he placed on the foundation. Oh, come on. How many preach? But it's not of the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. There's a foundation that God has put, that he died for. He sent his son to die for. And the world's not on that foundation. The church is supposed to be. Remember that the world, remember, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will also keep your sayings. Now, the awesome part about that is, Hopefully they kept the truth too, not just make up lies. Hopefully the truth, you know, the word of God goes forth, doesn't come back void. But what he's saying is if they hated me for what I spoke, if they hated for me for what I came against, if they hated for me for the foundation that I established, and you're on that foundation, don't be deceived that you will be hated as well. Right? And if you're loved by everybody, that shows you where you belong. That shows you what kingdom you're in. I'm not saying to hate me. Please don't hate me. I don't hate none of you. I love you. But I'm saying those that are of the world, right? But there's also wolves among sheep. Why would Jesus say that? Because people will, in the last days, there's an anti-Christ spirit. Anything anti-God, they'll take up residence. They'll sit next to us. They'll be behind. And we're not judging the people, but it's a spirit that's coming to what? Take your kids out. It's trying to shut the voices of teachers, the ears of children, so they're misled. He's trying to take the voice of the church. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to be bold. Someone said that one time, I need boldness. Just stay on the foundation and, and, and continue to spend time with the Lord. 
because there's confidence in him. I'm confident in what God did in my life. I know what he did was a miracle. Not that I'm better than anybody, but I can stand on that foundation and preach that with all boldness and confidence. But the moment I remove myself from that church, you won't hear me preaching. You, you, you won't hear me. You won't see me behind this pulpit. Go to Acts chapter 7. I'm going to show you the foundation I'm talking about. Right? Because we know that in the word of God, we'll start here. Let's start in uh, chapter 7. We know that Stephen here is being stoned. We'll start in verse 59. And then we'll make our way back. But we're, the Holy Spirit's taking us somewhere. But we know Stephen was stoned. And we like to use, and it's true, he says, Stephen says, do not hold this against them. Do not lay this charge at them, Lord. Ooh, he's been killed, y'all stoned. Now, I'll be honest, if you threw some stones at me physically, I might throw a couple back. You know what I mean? We heard that thing, grab the stones and build an altar. Man, I want to do that, but I might grab a couple and knock out, you know, a couple of you. Or, or I might just tuck tail and, and run because there's a mob after me. And we'll, we'll, we'll catch you later when you're by yourself. Or, you know what I mean? Your mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. Come on, don't act like I'm the only one that would think this way. I'm grabbing a couple boulders. I'm, I'm looking for the one that has the biggest forehead. Who can I hit? Oh, I'm not missing that head. Why? You know what I mean? I'm just going, hey, I'm just being real. Chapter 7, verse 59. I want to show you something, a foundation that God is showing us. And, the, and, the, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. He says, Lord, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin at their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Right? We can use that. Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right? But the, G, Stephen was in stone because he loved people. While he did, that's the greatest love. He laid his life down. He was stoned because he came with truth. He called out the wickedness. He called out the sin. This is the foundation. Truth is the foundation of God's love. Now, we'll, we'll, let's read it. Let's go back. Go to verse 51. Here is Stephen. He says, ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in the heart and in the ears. Listen, he's speaking to church people. He's speaking to generations that were raised. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. Why do you think the, the, why do you think the devil's coming after our children? Coming after our school? But look at our children up here worshiping the Lord. This is a, they're, they're on a good foundation, church. They're on a sure, found, an unmovable foundation. When things will be shaken, they will remain. And the stiff neck uncircumcision or the heart or the ears, back in those days, the Jews would circumcise themselves to separate themselves physically from Gentiles. Right? I'm bigger, I'm better than you, I'm different than you. I have this position. I'm the man of the house. I'm the, I'm the controller of my life. I can do what I want to do. And often we find ourselves doing things like this for the appearance or the acceptance of man to make ourselves feel good with self. Well, I'm in leadership. Well, I can preach. Well, I can worship. Well, I can lead. I I can take a post in the kingdom of God. This is my house. So we'll do things physically, but it's not a spiritual act. This This is Old Testament. But God is saying he's looking for the circumcision of the heart. But he also said the ears. Why is this? Because we know that in the New Testament, the Spirit of God came. Right? And he says, let those that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But if you're uncircumcised, you're not going to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. All you see is a bunch of crazy, radical people jumping for nothing, praying for nothing. What are they doing? Because the Spirit of God is present, but you can't hear. And God is saying it's time to end it. I want you to hear. I want you to receive. This is the foundation I've called for you. Don't worry about your your family. Don't worry about your your dad, your mom, your uncle. Don't worry. He's calling you as an individual. Don't worry about your husband. She didn't worry about me. Well, maybe she she didn't. Did you, baby? No, she was like, whatever. 
You know, her prayer was, if he ain't coming back different, he ain't going to be saved, I don't want him back. God heard her prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, someone help me, shout me down. Come on, I know I'm not the only one that met. Don't, don't even go there. Let's not start calling things out. I'm just being transparent. God heard her cry. He heard my cry. Oh, he heard my cry. He heard her cry. Hmm. Stiff neck and uncircumcised in the heart. Go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Come on, Jeremiah chapter 9. I want to show you something. Because he, he says, as your fathers did. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 26. Listen to what he says. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the uttermost corners that dwelleth in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. So this is something that these, this generation learned. I'm going to go here, parents, because we need to. I don't know what we think at times, that we, 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 can, we can live a certain way and do a certain thing. And, well, I'm following him. Well, I'm following them. I'm following Papa and Nana. I'm following Uncle and Aunt. You're supposed to follow Jesus. Not man. Go to Proverbs chapter 22. We know this portion of scripture. You resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. So this is something that God is saying that we're teaching our children. We raise our children. We raise our children the way we want, right? We don't take responsibility. There's a miracle. God's given us the ability to raise these children in his ways. And they will never depart. Well, let me just give you scripture real fast. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, and then we'll make our way up. Verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will never depart from it. Now, if, if if you listen to that portion of scripture, he didn't say raise a child in the ways of Jesus or in Christianity. He says raise the child in the way you think your child should go. And Pastor Robert says it all the time. You put your kids in Sodom and Gomorrah in compromising wickedness and religion, and you want to pull them out? No, you raised them that way. I pray the fear of the Lord comes upon us. Because I care for some of your your kids more than you do. And this is why when they need the truth, they come to me. Because they know I'm going to give them the truth in love. I'm responsible. No matter what I do, whoever I talk to, whoever I encounter, whether it's my kids, whether it's here preaching or someone counseling, I'm accountable. Do you understand? When I go before the Lord, I have to answer for everything I said to that person. Every right thing and every wrong thing. Leading them towards God and leading them away from God. I'm responsible. So are you. Someone say, so am I. Now, the word train in the Hebrew, it means to dedicate. It's a twofold meaning here with the word train in the Hebrew. It means to dedicate oneself. God is calling you to dedicate your life to show your children the ways of the Lord. Do we care for our children? We just drop them off here, drop them off there, get them involved in this sport, that sport. This, I mean, I mean do we care? They care. We both got to work. No, no, no. I know there's families in this church that had an opportunity to work and they sacrificed. So the kids can be in a Christian school. And now, years later, they're being blessed. Now, years later, but there's a sacrifice that has been rewarded to you. Because of your sacrifice, there's a blessing upon your children. Raising them in the ways of the Lord. I mean, if you knew, when we first got launched out, you know my dad's salary as a pastor was $25? 20, not, not $250, $25. Oftentimes we found ourselves in the house with nowhere to sleep on carpet. People blessing us with secondhand clothes and shoes that didn't fit. Tomato soup was one of the greatest things in my life. Fideo, beans and rice were awesome. Didn't understand it then, hated it, just looked at everybody else. Didn't understand it, but there was a sacrifice. I get up in the morning and go to sleep at night, my parents are praying. They're in the word, and that's, that, that stood all the way to now. I call my dad. What are you doing? Spending time with It doesn't matter when I call him. What are you doing? Spending time with the Lord. Where? In my office, outside, 
in the office outside. He's spending time with God. It means to dedicate. It also means this, to cultivate a taste for. To cultivate a taste for. So wherever you're raising your children, however you're raising them, whoever you're letting speak into your children's life, if it's not you, according to the word of God, they're cultivating a taste for that. They're developing a taste for that. Right? Now it says, train up a child in the way he should go and he will never depart from it. So how are you raising your children? They might not agree with everything. And here's the thing. Even though I was raised godly, I still left the faith. But where am I at today? So if you don't raise them godly, you raise them in the world, will they be here one day? Or because you raise them in the ways of the world, you raise them in, you, you raise them in, 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 in schooling and in, in trades and in, in further yourself. Get your house, get your car, make sure you have money, make sure you have, you're, you're, you're having them build up a house here on earth. Will they, will they be serving the Lord one day? Oh, we have to answer, church. Now, if you go to verse 4, I'm going I'm to show you what I mean. He says, raise up a child and train up a child the way you should go. Verse 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord and riches and honor and life. That's the ways of Christ. Right? But he says, well, let me just give you this too because you can pick. We're able to choose how to raise them. We're able to choose if we allow fornication and compromise. But don't think that God's going to hear your voice when this is what we're living like at home. And then we come in here and we fall asleep. I'm not looking at nobody. Verse 5, thorns and snares are the way of the forward. He that doeth keep his soul shall be far from them. So if you raise your children in the things of God, they will stay far from the snares. They will, start, they will remove themselves from the thorns and the snares of the world. But if you're forward, you ever met a person that's forward? Like, get off me. What, you're, too, like, you're in my space. Chasing something that's not here. Hello? You ever heard that about a forward person or something that's one, just one track minded? God's called us to be, have this mind which is in Christ Jesus. To reach the loss. But sometimes we're so forward in everything else that the world has to offer. I'm chasing this, chasing that, chasing this. I'm, I'm a spiritual prostitute. One church to the next church. One mic to one mic. One drum to one. I mean, we're all over the place. I don't know where I'm at. Believe me, the prophets in the old days spoke crazier than what I just said. So if you read it, it's actually in there. Go back to Acts. Everybody okay? Are we good? Okay, maybe we'll end right here. We'll see. I'm not saying a hand, but we'll see. So we know that the foundation of love is what? Thank you. Truth. It's truth. And the reason why he was stoned, the reason why Jesus was crucified, because the truth. He came against sin, wickedness. Right? And how else can we lay our life down like Jesus if you don't stand for truth? Right? And so what's the response of love? So there still has to be a response, right? He, he's, he's stoned because he stood for truth and he called out sin, but he says, Lord, hold us not against him. That's the love of Jesus. Because they're wicked, because they're in sin, because they were taught this. Hold us not against him. Even though I'm laying my life down, you're physically killing me. My response is, Lord, don't lay this at their charge. Don't hold this against them. That's the love of Jesus. Hmm. Verse 54 Actually, verse 52 in Acts chapter 7, which of the prophets have your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them and showed before the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now betrayers and murderers. So parents are teaching their kids how to come against God's word, how to come against God's prophets, God's messengers, the pastors. The, he, they're, they're, we're teaching them how because how we communicate at home. Right? Pastor Robert said, or somebody said it, you have pastor for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Instead of going through the word of God and saying what it did in my life, we now dissect and say, I don't know if you preached that right. Well, according to the Greek and the Hebrew, and according to what my, my, my uh, biblical whatever, I don't know if that's true or not. Now ye have become betrayers and murderers. Huh. And your fathers had murdered and persecuted the word of God, the prophets. Who have received the law by disposition of angels and have not kept it. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gashed at him with their teeth. Mad. Mad. Upset. 
But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice. These are demon-possessed, demonic people. And they stopped their ears. They plugged their ears. They don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you. And it says they ran up on him like a mob. Oh, what would you do? Like, what? What's going on here? You know, I mean, you're, you're, ready, you're, you're ready looking for someone because someone got my back. What's going on, man? I'm by myself. I'm about to get jumped again. They stopped their ears and they ran upon him with one accord. They were in one mind. So just because you're in unity with somebody doesn't mean you're in the unity of Christ. Come on, y'all. This is truth. This is life. You could be unified with somebody, but you could be in wickedness or in sin, unified with that. And you think, or maybe you don't think, maybe we know, maybe we just willfully go that way for the love of people. I got to love. I got to love people. Love has a foundation of truth. Some believe, some agree with me. And he cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, I'm going to read this again, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Or, yeah, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay this not at their charge. Now the love of Jesus comes through, see? The love was there in the beginning because he's willing to die for what truth is. Because I want you to be free. So I'm willing to lay my life down. Even if you hate me, even if you throw something at me, even if you try to kick me, I might kick you back, but if you try to kick me, I'm still, and Lord, don't hold that against him. And this is how we have to love each other. Right? And if you don't stand in truth, then you're going to find yourself hating each other. You're going to find yourself not liking one another. Why? Because your foundation is off. Well, they offended me, but your foundation is off. Because if your foundation was truth and on Jesus, you would say, Lord, hold us not against him. You can still work with people. You can still be in here free. Huh? And the love of Jesus is what sets people free. The true love that, that is expressed and is shown to, man, I hurt that guy. He still loves me. Hold us not against him. Forgive me. I forgave you a long time ago. I go to the Father every morning. I, I, I'm for, I forgave a long time ago. I hold nothing against people. It's the Spirit. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I want, I want to tell you about a dream I had. Are you ready for a dream? God speaks in visions and in dreams. Come on, y'all. And uh, so we, I had a dream here in the church. Can we turn the lights off, Dad, real fast? Can we get the lights? So we're, we're, we're in, we're, we're in uh, prayer. In, in this dream, I'm in prayer like this. You know, we pray the lights off. We're just rocking. Where everybody's walking back and forth and pacing. So I'm in prayer, and as I'm in prayer, I start feeling this, this, this feeling of not trustworthy. I start feeling this feeling of, of, of harm. And I almost in my dream, like, is somebody here to, like, to try to shoot the church up? Is somebody here trying to hurt me, hurt my family? Like, I, w- I was in this dream. But I begin to walk around the building and walk around, and everybody's praying. I'm walking around, and th- the feeling is there's something unsettled. You ever been that in your house? I just, let me just get up and check. Am I the only one that feels that way? Huh? You're unsettled because something's not trustworthy. And so as I'm here, I'm bringing, I'm bringing you somewhere. We're going to close here, but I'm bringing you somewhere. As I'm, as I'm walking around, I come back to the front, and the Holy Spirit tells me to walk down this hallway here. So I walk down the hallway, and as I'm walking down this hallway, somebody's coming in the door from the back door. Someone's already coming in. Okay? And as they came in, it was a demonic spirit that came in with them. And the reason why I say that is because he, he was moving not like a human. It was unhuman. It was a spiritual attack. And he began to tell me that, I love you, pastor. I love you, pastor. And I was asking, what, you know, we got into a conversation, what are you doing here? What's going on? And, and uh, that's all he kept saying. And God was telling me there, 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 there's, there's a spirit of deception. There's a spirit of the antichrist. There, there, there's, there, there, there's, a, there's a serpent trying to bite his people again. We just went through things, church. Are we like the children of Israel? That we go back in a circle again? That we would be hit in the forehead and we would lose family members and we would lose loved ones and families and, and we're, we're okay to do it again? A second time? A third time? Now, I have to answer for myself and my family and I'm not willing to do that. But I'm also a shepherd and a pastor under Pastor Robert and that won't happen here. 
Why? Because this is God's church. Then it's our church. So as I begin to tell him to leave, this person begins to leave, he begins to foam at the mouth. And as he's foaming, this stench, I'm, I'm, try, I'm not trying to be gross about it, but there's this stench, and it wasn't sulfur, it wasn't like a demonic spirit that sometimes you encounter when you're, when you're bringing deliverance to somebody, and not that smell, it wasn't urine, it was almost like, you know when you had those long sleeps and there's slobbers all over you, it's like, and you get it, it's like white stuff on your mouth, it's like, a, like a sour, it's just like, I, I, the only thing I can think of, like a sour smell, because it was foaming from the mouth. So I rebuked him, and he, I pushed him out. Now, the crazy part is this, okay? In my dream, there are leaders. We're all leaders. Someone say, I'm a leader. We're leading somebody. But there was leaders holding the door open for him to come in. And I'm like, what in the heck's going on? Why am I fighting this spirit, and you're allowing them to come in? Why would you hold the door open for something like that? For the sake of love? Do you not understand that there's sheep here, there's people here that we have to care for and fight for? And we're allowing this spirit to come back in the church and it's coming through leadership? Now the crazy part about it is I push him out of the church and he goes out and now there's another man there with the box trying to put a box in the church. And I'm like, what in the world's going on? What it, we don't need nothing from you guys. We, our help comes from the Lord. We're, we're doing perfectly fine. We don't want no gifts. We don't need no. This is, this is a spiritual dream, okay, y'all? We don't need no gifts from you. And he's adamant about putting the box in, and the leaders are allowing him to put it in. They're like holding the door for him, like, God bless you. Come on in. And I'm like, dude, what's going on? So I, I got upset, and I kicked the box in him out. Pa. Right, and as he went back, the box fell over, and a bunch of snakes came out. And God is telling me to tell us this morning, some of you have been bitten. But if the Apostle Paul can shake it off because he's a man of God. Oh. Shake it off! You have power and dominion and authority to shake it off. You don't have to sit there in that deception. You don't got to sit there in that sin. You don't have to, church. And as I, as I continued, he's, he's stumbling back. He's going towards the stairs. And, and I'm, and I'm pre just get behind me, Satan. You demonic spirit. Because I wasn't going at the person. I knew the person, but I wasn't going at the person. I'm going at the spirit behind it. With love for that person's soul. And guess what? Well, once, I, once I said, get behind me, Satan, his teeth broke. And shattered. And he had no more, he had no more teeth, and he was like this. He couldn't speak. God shut the mouth. But I also got a revelation from one of the sisters. She said, You know what happened, Pastor? Is the bite was broken. <sighs> the bite that was on people, God says, I'm breaking the teeth of the serpent. Because of what Jesus did. Everything is under the feet of Jesus. That bite is no longer in this place in the name of Jesus. But as men and women of God and as ushers and as leaders in the church, we have to be willing to stand and fight for this church. Apostle Paul talks about professing the faith, but he also talks about protecting the faith. And he's not just meaning to, to defense and knuckle up. And, no, he's talking about protecting it in truth. Coming against demonic spirits. Going at it. The, the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by We're going at it. In truth. And when that's our foundation, church, our love for each other and our love for one another and our pastors and our church will be true love. Because if it's not on that, it's not true love. It's deception and it's lies. And liars won't enter the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, but in the world, I was a liar, but I hated people around me in my little, in my little circle. If you're a liar, you, you, we don't want you around. And I, was a, I was one of the worst liars possible. You know when those liars, you start believing things? Some of us, <laughs> you start believing, oh, it is truth. Wait a minute. It did happen. That's the lies of the enemy. That's what I'm saying. We get so far off in the foundation, we begin to believe that lies is truth. All right, we'll read one more thing. We'll be done. Is that okay? Are we good, everybody? How long have I been preaching for? 
Does, it doesn't matter? Okay, okay, I like that. It's all Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go to 2 Thessalonians really quick. We'll read a couple of scriptures and we'll, we're going to hop over really fast. But go to 2 Thessalonians if you can with me. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he that now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, when the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9 of chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs in line wonders. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in him that perish. Because they received not the love of truth. What have we been talking about? The foundation of love is truth. But we received not the love of the truth. You have to love this. Man can't live by bread alone, but every word that you have to have this in you. I'm coming to eat, Father. I'm at the table. But you can't be at the table of the wicked in the table of the Lord. You're not a part. You can't, you can't partake in both tables. You can't drink of both cups. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions, and they should not believe a lie. And they should believe a lie. Now, we know that he's talking about when, 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 when the rapture comes and the church is taken, the Spirit of God is gone. There's going to be a delusion even then upon those that left that thought they were right, and they, now they're, they're left, those that have been trained in the ways of God, those that have sat in this church. And if you get left behind, I believe God is speaking. He's saying, I'm going to send a delusion on them. But is there a possibility that delusion could be sent now? Is there a, just ask yourself, is there a possibility that you already have this delusion? I'm not, I'm not God. But, I'll, but I do have the fear of the Lord. And because of that, I'm, I'm repented. I'm thankful for the grace of God. But the grace of God empowers you to live. You understand, without the grace of God, you couldn't even serve. So being a servant of the Lord and how we give everything to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, shows you that you know what the grace of God even is. Why? Because the grace of God, you don't get what we deserve. Hell. We should be dead. We should be consumed. But because he's not, I'm going to serve you with all that I got. Because I understand that grace and I'll power, and I'm not going to trample on it, Lord. That they might be damned who believe... Not in the truth, but had the pleasure in unrighteousness. I'll read that again. That they may be damned who believe not the truth. Not the truth. We don't, we're not accepting the truth. But he had pleasure in unrighteousness. This foundation was unrighteous love. Compromising love. Now, I'm so thankful because every ear can hear this morning. Walls came down for you and I so we could receive what the Spirit of God is saying. And that's why I'm thankful. Because we need to be able to hear. Maybe there, our ears have been plugged. But God knows your need. God knows. Go to John. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'll just start from the beginning. 1 John chapter 4. Believe it, be, beloved, believe not every spirit by the spirits. Try the spirits. Whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now, that word prophet, you might say, well, no one's a prophet. The, the, that, that means someone that is speaking for God. Okay? I'm a man of God, so I'm going to, th that's a prophet. That's what he's talking about, New Testament. Okay? Anybody that says, I have a word from the Lord for you. Okay. False prophets. Check his character. Check what they're doing. Don't just let anybody speak into your life. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your grandpa. Your gra it doesn't matter. Family doesn't matter. In the last days, the truth is going to come like a sword. And it's crazy because it talks about in the next, in chapter 10 of Matthew, it talks about that it's going to be a division between households. I mean, how, close, how much closer can we get? Two in the bed. One lifted, one left behind. Come on, somebody. God is speaking. 
They are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world, hereby knowing the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not the Son of Christ is come in the flesh and is not of God. Now, what does that mean? We can all say, yeah, we know Jesus is good. Right? But he's not just talking about speaking. He's talking about standing. Right? I'm a, I'm a lover. You see, people hijack the name of Jesus, and that's why he says, I hold my word higher than my name. I love Jesus. Yeah, but you're not standing. Your, your life shows something different. There's not truth in your life. There's, there's unrighteousness, compromise, a, 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 a gossiping, all these different things. For the sake, and see, this, this is how you and I know, church. When, you, when, you, when you're trying to build your own kingdom, there, there's evidence of men building their own kingdom. And a lot of times we're okay with that because we like man's kingdom. It, it, it caters to the flesh. But when you're building God's kingdom, his ways are not our ways. It just doesn't seem right. His, exactly. Exactly. It, don't, it, it goes against the current of the world. It goes against YouTube ministers nowadays. Uh, we have kids in here, huh? Okay, I'll keep it PG. Sorry, babe. She's all, yeah, I don't care. I'll say anything. It's just disgusting to know how all these people, all, all, we give ear to people, and we're not judging the people, but it's the spirit. But they have so many millions and thousands, hundreds, thousands of followers, and we give ear, and now they're changing everything. This is a gift from God. Hmm, we'll leave it at for a marriage class or something else. Verse 4, ye are God's little children and have overcome because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But that's the foundation of truth, church. Someone say truth. They are, of the, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. Hmm. Someone say of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby, no, we are spirit of truth and spirit of error. So not everybody's going to receive, church, what it is that you and I have to offer. They're not going to receive. It, it's, 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 it was lived out before us from the very beginning all the way to the end. It's lived out. And we think that we're going to come in here and just save the world. and Everybody's going to love me and everybody's going to be good with me. That's a deceptive spirit. And if we're not careful, we're leading our families, our house, and we're letting that come in. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, we're done. Keep going. <laughs> All right. If you've got to get up and stretch, that's fine. No worries. I understand. All right, Matthew chapter 20. Jesus here is speaking of, of the death that's coming. He's speaking to his disciples, not, not Christians, but disciples. We're all called to be disciples of Jesus. So he's speaking to his disciples here. And I, I want to end it with this because I really believe that there's a position that God has called you to. His, he's called his church to a position. And if we don't stand on that position, which is the truth of God and the love of God, because the truth is our foundation, but then it's also accompanied by the love of God. We've seen it, right? We just talked about it through Scripture. If we're not careful, this is what happens, okay? We no longer hear Jesus. We're in this church. We no longer can hear God. We can no longer hear the voice of the Holy Spirit anymore. Listen to what I'm saying. Verse 17 of chapter 20 and Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall come and condemn him to death. And he shall be delivered him to the Gentiles to mock, to scorch, and to kill him or crucify him. On the third day he will rise again. Woo, someone say rise again. But it's crazy. I mean, what would happen... If your husband or your wife told you, I'm about to go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got to turn myself in, but they're going to kill me, chop my head off. They're, Wait a minute. No, let's run. Let's do something. What are you talking about? Like, that can't happen. But they're with Jesus, the one that did the miracles, the one that's brought healing, the one that's provided, the one that gave them new life, the one that called them, and they felt the tug of the Holy Ghost, and they followed, they dropped everything and followed Jesus. What would you do if that man was leaving you? And he says, I'm about to be betrayed and crucified and turned over. What would your response be? Like, wait a minute, there's another way. Wait a minute, if you've got to rebuke me, get behind me, say, fine, but this is, do, does, this, does this have to happen? Yeah. And we know that Peter says, oh, that, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to let him kill you. I'm not going to let him take you. That probably would have been my response to this. Ha there has to be another way, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I need you with me. I can't do this by myself. Yeah. When I was without you, I was doing my own thing. But since you've been with me, I dropped everything of the world. Oh. Yeah. 
and I've pursued you and I've followed you and I've seen you work miracles and I believe what you've done. And betrayal doesn't come from the world. Betrayal comes from inside. Right? So he's telling them, one of you are going to betray me without saying it. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. You know how I know this? They, 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 they didn't hear Jesus. Listen to what the response is. Verse 20, they came to him with the mother of Zebedee's, uh, James and John, that's the mother of Zebedee's, children with her and sons worshiping with him and desiring a certain thing of him. How many times have we come into the house of God, this church, that preaches truth? We come in here, we don't hear what Jesus wants from us or to drop or to let go, but we come here and we want a certain thing from him. Right? We, we don't, we're not in prayer on time. We're not, we'll come to the altar and we'll, we'll cry out and we need to cry out. But repentance has fruit. But I'm just saying, how many times have we done that? God is speaking to you, but instead of hearing what Jesus is saying to the Holy Spirit, we come up here and we neglect everything he said because I want a certain something from you. I have my own agenda. I need something from you today, Santa. So they heard him. But it meant nothing to them because they had their own idea already. They already had what they wanted. Okay, let me continue. We're almost done here. Verse 21, he said unto her, what will thou want? And she said unto him, grant these two sons may, that may sit, one at the right hand and one at the left hand. They're looking for position in something physical when this is a spiritual thing. And he said, you're going to betray me, but you're worried about a position? You're worried about a title? You're worried about being a voice. You're worried, you're worried about, what is that? That's a prideful spirit. Yeah. Lucifer wanted to exalt to be exalted above Jesus. And he was cast down like lightning from heaven because of pride. Because he wanted the position. He didn't want Jesus. I, I don't care what you got to go through, pastor. I don't care what you got to go through, brother. I don't care what you got to go through, Jesus. But I know what I want. He had a prideful, they had a prideful mentality. Jesus answered, listen, Jesus is awesome, right? Jesus answered and says, do you know what you ask of? Are you able to even drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the same baptism that I've been baptized with? And look at the response, quick. And they said to them, we are able. Immaturity. Come on, someone say immaturity. Listen, my father, has, my father got saved at the age of 26. He got launched out at the age of 30. He's been pastoring and preaching and giving his life since then. We've built a church here in Modesto, went across the pond to England, built two churches there, came back, and now we're here in Modesto again. For me to think, this is a man of God, for me to think that I could even do what he's done, it's, it's, it's ignorant. It's immaturity. I can't. I can't do what he did. He's a man of God. God chose him for a calling. For a purpose. And I can't fulfill that purpose. And I don't want to copy that purpose. But one thing that I know I need to do. See, when, when, when you and I are serving God, God looks at us the same. It's the servanthood he looks at. Right? He called me to serve under my father. He called me to serve Ignite. He called me to serve here. And there's been times in my life where I find myself wanting to chase. I, I want to do that. I could do that. We're able. I'm able to do what he did. No, that's stupidity. That's immaturity. At 43 years old, I'm immature. And he said unto them, ye shall drink of the cups. So here's his response, just as fast. Okay, now you're going to drink. You, you're able to do it? Okay, now you're going to do it. Oh, you're going to drink of the cup indeed and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But sit on the right hand and the left hand. It is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them that is prepared by my Father. Huh. He says, you can, that's, that's, up between, that's between my father. But if you love me, you stand on truth, as my father did. And you remain in that. There's going to be a place prepared for you. And it might not be sitting on the throne next to Jesus, but you're going to be in heaven. He goes to prepare a place for you and I. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have said it. If you stand on truth, remain on truth. Let's stand to our feet. Verse 24. And when the ten heard, they were moved with indignation against the brethren. Can you imagine this? These two are asking for a position. Now the other ten are mad. Well, they're going to get something I don't get. This is ridiculous. 
wait a minute, Jesus just said he's about to be betrayed and you don't care either? You're more worried about your brother's position and title? So now you're talking about jealousy. And jealousy will bring spiritual suicide. Saul became jealous of David. And because of jealousy, now he's in rebellion. Now he's going after God's anointed. Now he's getting counseling from wickedness. He's getting counseling from witches. And because of that jealousy, he commits suicide on the battlefield. Jealousy, church. But it doesn't really matter that Titus is an awesome worship leader and he's playing the piano. It doesn't, why do I want his position? Is it matter? Brother Roy is an awesome preacher. I'm not called to preach like Brother Roy. That's his position. God's called me to a position. And that position is what? Servanthood. When you serve, God looks at you the same. It's the servanthood that matters. He says, enter in, thou faithful servant. Not pastor, leader, piano player, worshiper. He says, servant. So when you serve, understand, I'm about, this is the greatest calling. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. Verse 25, and Jesus called them and said unto him, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they are great exercise authority upon them. So this is the world. This is how the world's kingdom is ran, by authority and power. I can tell you what to do because I, 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 have, the, I have the title. I can sit you down, I can talk to you, I can say what I want because I have the, the title. That's the world. That's not the church. Yes, well, there's order, and yes, we, we have position, but I'm talking to leaders, those that are leading your house, those that are leading ministries. That's not how you're supposed to lead, by dominion over somebody and authority, because I'm, I'm, I'm Pastor Robert's son, and I've been here, I was born here, I, could, I, can, tell, I can say what I want. That's not true, that's wrong. If, you, if, if I say something, and it's not of my father, go to my father and tell him, your son is mistreating us. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. Your, 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 your son is saying something that you said. That I know that's not you, Pastor Robert. I just want clarity. You have the right. So go. If, he, if I've done that, go. Go. So I can get chastened. So I can get rebuked. So I can get back on the foundation of truth. If you care. Don't just sit there and talk about ideas and, 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 and suggestions. If you got an idea and a suggestion, fine, pray about it. Get together with people, but then bring it to the pastor. Why? Because you can't do nothing with it anyway. It's the pastor's job to say yes or no. Oh, that's good preaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't know where that came from. Holy Ghost. Jesus, come on, somebody. All right, we're done here. Verse 26. But he said, shall not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him minister. There's a servant. I'm ministering. I'm not, I'm not looking to be ministered to. I'm looking to minister. And whosoever shall be a chief among you, let him be a servant. The, a good leader is the best servant. A good leader is the best servant. And even as a son of man came to be ministered unto, but to minister. And he gave his life for many as a ransom for many. That's the love of Jesus, church. So how do you and I lead? How do you and I Lead our families by servanthood. We don't lead by authority and dominion. We lead by servanthood. Do you receive that this morning? Can we give them praise in this place? Come on, we can turn the lights on down. I'm sorry, Lord, leave them off. I'm sorry, altar's going to be open. I apologize. I'm sorry. I know some people like the lights on. I'm, I'm sorry. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the foundation of truth, God, that sets us on the right path of what love is and what it looks like, God. Though things may seem rough and things may get hard and things seem rocky, Lord. If I remain on the foundation of truth, God. If I remain, Lord. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this service, Lord. We're thankful for every man, woman, and child in this place, Lord. Every leader, God. Every servant, God. Lord, you've called this church to a higher place. And this is why we're getting this. You're taking us from glory to glory, not set back to glory. Glory to glory, you've called us. Faith to faith, God. Strength to strength. Lord, I pray that this message, Lord, just spoke to us. God, enlightened us. Or those that were sitting in darkness with, with scales over their eyes, God, those scales are removed even now, God. That they heard and, and that they would be responsive to your word. Not my word, but your word, God. Because it is truth. 
We thank you in Jesus' name. These altars are open, church. If you want to come and just love on the Lord, these altars are open. Just come. If you're not saved and you want to give Jesus Christ your life, if you want to understand what that true is, you want to understand what love really is, it's in Jesus. Not in the world. It's in Jesus. And if that's you this morning, I want you to come and we can lay hands on you. We can pray for you. we got a ministry team that can, that can lead you to the Lord. If you need to rededicate your life, that's fine. Just come and rededicate your life. It's okay. We've done it. Matter of fact, we have to come before the Lord every day in repentance and consecration. Don't let the devil rob you from what God has from you. His love is real. Thank you, Jesus.
worshiping you, Noah. God's been putting in me that the king is coming, people. The king is coming and we can't be satisfied with this going because we got to cry out for those prodigals, for our sons and daughters, our, our aunts, our uncles, because you know what he's coming and we're we sure we're gonna go but you know what we gotta cry we gotta contend we gotta we gotta fight for those prodigals that are out there we can't be satisfied in that and then it's just that's the way it is no we gotta break it because you know what he's coming and the king is coming <laughs> and he's coming soon <laughs> so let's rise up rise up and pray for those Come on, church. Give them praise. Come on. Come on. Don't, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Come on. We got to believe. Come on. They're coming back. The prodigals will return. Let them come, Lord, to that place. Let them come to that place where they see God. Become it, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on. They're coming back. They're coming back. Call them by name. Call them by name if you have to. Hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's doing a new thing. Thank you, Jesus. Moreover, go out and preach my word boldly. For I put my word in your mouth. You are to speak with boldness. I have prayed for you. I have interceded on the right hand of the Father. I have healed your heart. I have commanded you to be he, be friends with me. I have commanded you to love one another in unity and to esteem others higher than yourselves. Now go out there and speak with boldness. Lo, I have given you boldness. I have placed it upon your heart. Be ye courage and of good strength, for I will be with you always, thus saith the Lord. Woo, come on! He will be with you always. Come on, always. He's with me always.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just take our time. Let's just take our time. We're okay. We're going to take our time here. But those that are standing, if you need, you need a seat, that you, you can sit down too if you need to. That's fine. But those that are up here, we want to give time. God is doing something. You can see change. You can see a new thing. I don't know about you, but I desire a new thing in my own life. Thank you, Lord. Is that okay if I share something? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, this is for you, Brother Ed. As you were standing over there, I told Zeke to go pray for you because there was a different realm of glory that God wanted to drop on you. And he said he's going to be opening doors, wide open, wide open doors because of the favor that he has on your life. But to keep seeking the more because there's layers of glory that he's going to take you to. Keep pushing. Keep fighting. Come on, give him praise. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. You know, I think this is one of the major reasons why we have to be connected to each other. God first, then each other. We need each other. Because a lot of us are going through some similar battles and some are going through different battles. And we need each other. We, we, we need encouragement. We need truth. We need love. And so I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful for Pastor Robert and Pastor Ronnie for, man, for taking that step of faith years ago to come and give us this. Because only God knew what was, it, what was ahead. Only God knew that we'd be here, right? God knows. He's sovereign. You know, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to do here. <laughs> It's just a beautiful set. This is what we want. This is this is church. Man, God is good. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what else to say. He's faithful. I'm gonna say he's faithful. He's faithful. Man, he's faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's good. All right. Well, should we end with the song or something? Or we, you guys, can we end with a song? Can we? Can we sing through? Can we sing breakthrough? Breakthrough. When Sam tears it up on the bass. I, I like that part, man. That part's like gets me going, man. How many got a breakthrough this morning? So it's not just a song; it's something that we're experiencing. Breakthrough. Let's get the lights. We can get the lights. You'll sing just a few times, and then uh, when, whenever, whenever we're, you're dismissed, once we're done, you guys are dismissed, once we're done. I love you guys. If you need to go now, you can go now, but we're going to sing this song out, and then we'll be done. But I love you guys. Do not forget, Wednesday night, back in the house of our Bible study class, 6 for prayer, 7 p.m. Get ready to bring your Bibles, bring your notepads, your books. We'll see you guys then. I love you guys. Let's sing this song. Check, check. Can you hear me? Uh. I was thinking of singing a song that kind of confirmed me what Sister Bouncy was saying. It kind of popped up in my spirit, a song that we're writing, and it's not nowhere it's done, but we can give you guys a preview, and I think it would just be fun. Let's try that one. Ready? Two, three, four.
again, coming again, coming again, he's coming, coming again, coming again, coming again, he's coming. When the word became flesh, he came and dwelt among us, and he shed his blood for the redemption. Bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget your Bibles. 